Good morning, I am Mana Rashida Hibesh, obstetrician and gynecologist at Maqasid General Hospital, affiliated with the American University Hospital of Beirut. I would like to thank the organizing committee for the invitation. Today, I will share with you the data we collected in our study about maternal vitamin D11 and the rate of primary C-section. I will discuss the rate of cesarean section, why it is increasing, and the prevalence of vitamin D deficiency, what are the causes of vitamin D deficiency, why the previous generations have no deficiency, what is the effect of vitamin D on smooth muscle contraction, our cross-sectional study about vitamin D level and primary cesarean section rate, and finally tips to remember. What is the rate of C-section and why it is increasing? C-section accounts for 21% of all births globally, according to the British Medical Journal in 2015. About 29.7 million births are born by C-section. 106 out of 169 countries have a rate above 10 to 15% and at least 15 countries have a rate exceeding 40%. The national rates for C-sections in 2018 remained below 20% in parts of Northern Europe and increased to 50% and over in Southeastern Europe. In the USA, it is increased from 20.7% in 1996 to 32% in 2015. In North Africa, the rate has increased from 5 to 28 percent, and in Lebanon, it was 40.8 percent in 2008 and reached 49 percent in 2015. As we see here, the rates of primary C section in the world map, the higher rates are in uh, Iran, in Mexico, in Brazil, and Argentina. And plotting them in this curve, we can see that on the graph, there is a tremendous increase in the rate of C-section in East Asia and Pacific, Eastern Europe and Central Asia and Latin America and Caribbean. Adding them all in one graph, we can see that the highest rates are in Latin America and Caribbean, while uh, Europe is mid in the curve and the least rates are in Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa. But why is C-section increasing? Most cases are due to over-reliance on cesarean procedures. Reasons vary from country to country, such as lack of medical training, lack of midwives to prevent or to treat problems, financial incentives for hospital and doctor, medical infrastructure and outpatient clinics, public versus private facilities, lack of instrumental deliveries. Disparities in developing world and over-reliance in the West and great need for caesarean in sub-Saharan Africa used only 4% of cases. When we asked our Lebanese colleagues about the why is C-section increasing, the answers were are due to lower tolerance to any complication or outcome other than a perfect baby, C-section on demand by maternal request, scheduling issues that increase convenience for both mother and her obstetrician, economic pressure, provider and mother-driven medicalization of birth, and a broader perception that C-section is safe and fear of litigation. But how does litigation affect our work? A study was done as it were, uh, worldwide in Italy, Spain, France, Germany, and the answers from the obstetrician, whether uh, litigation affect our work or not, it was yes and occasionally in most of the countries. This litigation is most probably due to fear from the uh, social media in, where every complication done by any obstetrician will be spread widely through the uh, social media, whether and they try to blame the obstetrician, whether he is uh, in mistake or not.
For this reason, our Lebanese Order of Physician had put a law to protect physician from this issue. What about vitamin D deficiency? Vitamin D deficiency is a global health problem. Pregnant women are considered as high risk group. The rate of the prevalence of vitamin D deficiency worldwide reaches 65% in Canada, 59% in South America, 60% in North Africa, up to 100% in Northern Europe, and also in Asia, it is up to 98%, and the Middle East, up to 100% have vitamin D deficiency. What are the sources of vitamin D? As we know, 80% of the source of vitamin D is through the ultraviolet rays of the sun, through direct synthesis of vitamin D under, in the, under the skin. Other sources are cod liver oil, fish, mushroom, uh, orange juice, uh, egg yolk, and the cheese. When we started to request vitamin D levels, some public said it is a commercial issue for the pharmaceuticals to earn money. And they inquired that why did previous generations have no deficiency? We answered that they used to live in a healthy atmosphere while all the studies showed that the polluted air will decrease the amount of rays reaching the skin, thus decreasing the synthesis of vitamin D. Second, they used to live a healthy lifestyle and our lifestyle is sedentary and decreased activity will decrease vitamin D levels. They used to rely on healthy diet and we rely on the bad fast food and unhealthy diet. Their kids use, they used to play under the direct sunlight while ours are imprisoned with their iPads inside our homes. And finally, obesity, which is considered now a disease by the Center of Disease Control and Prevention. It accounts for 42.8% of middle-aged adults. So yes, it is a truth. But when to screen our patients and how much to take? According to the European Vitamin D Association, Women planning pregnancy should receive adequate vitamin D supply, the same as in the general adult population, and if it is possible, under the control of vitamin D concentration. When pregnancy is confirmed, supplementation should be carried out under the control of vitamin D concentration to maintain optimal concentration within the ranges of 30 to 50 nanogram per milliliter. If the assessment of this concentration is not possible, it is recommended to use vitamin D at a dose of 2,000 international units per day throughout pregnancy and lactation. While according to the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, at this time there is insufficient evidence to support a recommendation for screening all pregnant women for vitamin D deficiency. For pregnant women thought to be at increased risk of deficiency, vitamin serum D levels can be considered and should be interpreted in the context of the individual clinical circumstances. When deficiency is identified during pregnancy, most experts agree that 1,000 to 2,000 IU per day of vitamin D is safe. Higher dose regimens have not been studied during pregnancy. Recommendations concerning routine vitamin D supplementation during pregnancy beyond that contained in a prenatal vitamin should await the completion of ongoing randomized control trials. While according to the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, vitamin D supplementation is safe in pregnancy, existing NICE guidance states that all pregnant and breastfeeding women should be informed about the importance of vitamin D and should take 10 micrograms daily. Some pregnant women have low levels of vitamin D, however, women who is pigmented or covered skin, women who are obese or immobile are at a higher risk of deficiency. Those women may be advised to take a higher dose of vitamin D. And a systemic review of randomized trials of 43 trials 
were eligible for the meta-analysis concluded that most of these trials on prenatal vitamin D published by September 2017 were small and of low quality. The evidence to date seems insufficient to guide clinical or policy recommendation. Future trials should be designed and powered to examine clinical endpoints, including maternal conditions related to pregnancy, such as preeclampsia, infant growth, and respiratory outcomes. Coming to our study, it was published by the Journal of Clinical Gynecology and Obstetrics. Why we did it? Because there is increased rate of primary C-section and due to high prevalence of vitamin D in our population. Where? At Makassid General Hospital, affiliated with the American University Hospital of Beirut. What is the importance of vitamin D in the process of labor? Adequate uterine contraction is essential for proper progress of labor and cervical dilatation. Vitamin D receptor has been identified in smooth and skeletal muscle tissue. And serum calcium level is regulated by vitamin D and it has a role in the initiation of labor. What is the role of vitamin D on smooth muscle? It plays a role whether in a direct and indirect method. Indirectly, it affects serum calcium level and phosphate hemostasis through parathyroid hormone levels, as thus affecting the intracellular calcium and phosphate hemostasis in the muscle form, function, and metabolism. While the direct effect is through the vitamin D receptors intracellularly, which has a genomic effect in the nucleus, causing uh, affection of the calmodulin, which improves muscle contraction, and insulin growth factor, which promotes cell differentiation and proliferation. What about vitamin D deficiency? It affects the initiation of labor, decreases muscle performance and strength, decreases serum calcium level, reduces the ability of pregnant women to push, leading to a longer and more difficult labor, affects uterine muscle contractility. Our primary objective was to study the effect of low level of white Internal vitamin D on the progress of labor, thus affecting primary C-section rate. While our secondary objectives were pregnancy outcomes such as risk of uterine atomy, postpartum hemorrhage, pregnancy-induced hypertension, preeclampsia, and gestational diabetes. The neonatal outcomes were preterm delivery and low birth weight. It was a, an observational cross-sectional study, including 381 pregnant women fitting the eligible criteria. A p-value of less than 0.05 was of clinical significance. We included those who are previously healthy, with singleton pregnancy, whether nulliparous or multiparous, with swelling presentation, whether delivered normally or were operative vaginal delivery, with primary C-section, either for failure of induction, failure to progress, and failure to descent. We excluded all those with medical illness or chronic condition, with multiple gestation, babies with congenital anomalies, medications that can affect vitamin D level, vitamin D level that was missed, and C-section for elective causes or fetal distress, abnormal presentation or placentation, and previous C-section or uterine surgery. We ended up with a total of 381 ladies, 232 in the study group, which were deficient, and 149 in the control group with, with sufficient vitamin D level. Concerning the demographic characteristics concerning maternal age, BMI, race, educational status, gestational age and delivery, and newborn gender, there was no clinical significance between the two groups. Concerning current pregnancy complication, we found that preterm labor was more in the deficient group with a significant p-value. Also concerning previous pregnancy complications, preterm delivery was, was in, more in the uh, study group with a clinical of clinical significance. 
Concerning more of delivery, those who delivered with normal vaginal delivery were more in the sufficient group, while those with operative vaginal delivery and primary C-section were more in the deficient group with a highly significant p-value. Concerning the causes of primary C-section, there was no difference between the indication whether failure to progress, failure of induction, and failure to descent. Concerning uterine atony and postpartum hemorrhage, they were more in the deficient group with a clinical significance. Concerning small gestational age and preterm delivery, there was no clinical significance between the two groups. Those who were receiving vitamin D, they have sufficient vitamin D level, uh, levels at term of delivery with a high clinical significance. High prevalence of vitamin D deficiencies among pregnant women, 60.9%. Patients with low level of vitamin D delivered by or by C-section and are, are more at risk to develop uterine atony and postpartum hemorrhage. Mirwood et al. showed four times increased risk of C-section among women with low level of vitamin D less than 37.5 nanomore per milliliter, where similar results reported by Scholl et al. Khan et al. found a significant association between vitamin D deficiency and uterine atony. According to our data, there was no significant association between vitamin D deficiency and hypertensive disorder, similar to other results reported by Po et al. and Van Wert et al. Patients with low level of vitamin D were not at a higher risk to develop gestational diabetes, and similar results were reported by Baker et al. No significant association between maternal vitamin D and small for gestational age and preterm birth. Similar results were reported by Alonso et al. Our study was the first study done in the Lebanese population. This study showed that vitamin D deficiency is a highly prevalent health problem among pregnant women in a selected Lebanese population and demonstrated a strong association between maternal vitamin D level and the rate of primary C-section and uterine atony and postpartum hemorrhage. Our recommendation is to assess your patient risk for vitamin D deficiency and screen by vitamin D concentration accordingly. If they are found to be deficient, never prescribe for hair supplements containing more than 2,000 IU per day, since safety of higher levels of vitamin D supplementation has not been studied yet, and be ready to manage uterine atony and postpartum hemorrhage in case of deficiency. And remember that obstetrics is an art of patience. And as I always say, as you wait for the baby nine months to come, try to wait on his mom and give her time to deliver normally. I would like to invite you to visit our lovely and beautiful country, Lebanon. And thank you all for your attendance.